This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Book Legion. This is your co-host, uh, Kevin Diaz. Great to have you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to learn a little bit uh, about the book we're going to be covering today. Uh, I've got one that I think is, uh, I think Steve Forbes described it best um, in his review of a must read for every American. And I, I completely agree. Uh, the book uh, that we're going to be discussing today is one called The Price We Pay for Those Watching. Here it is. Uh, it's a book by a, uh, a doctor called Marty McCary. Uh, he's a New York Times bestselling author and uh, really healthcare expert slash surgeon uh, slash do it all at uh, Johns Hopkins um university you know he writes for the wall street journal and, and has even served in leadership at the world health organization and this book the price we pay actually received the uh, award for best uh, business book of the year uh, in 2020 um it's just a, a great book overall from um being transparent about how to improve the health of our healthcare system, pun intended, and just the health of communities across the board. He's really focusing on redesigning a healthcare to make it more reliable, more holistic, more coordinated um, as all facets of, of the healthcare business for it to all be more integrated, better together, to better serve vulnerable uh, populations and and serve everyone at the end of the day. That's what what truly what we're after. And, and I think he's at the forefront of uh, a national effort to increase medical transparency and, and lower costs for just everyday businesses and uh, co- and consumers, right? So um, the book is broken up into three different portions, roughly around 250 pages uh, is the book. So it's not a super crazy long read. Um, there is a lot of information, so I recommend you take it slow um, and, and jot down notes as you go. But all in all, very transparent. I loved how he's able to take these complex business operations of our healthcare system, right? It's a huge p- portion of our expenditure as a country. People don't realize that just last year, 18% of our uh, GDP uh, went towards healthcare. <laughs> That's uh, pretty crazy considering you understand how big our GDP is here in the United States. You start to get a better understanding of just how big that this uh, industry is. So broke it up into three different portions. I really enjoyed that. And he does a good job of just making it simple for the everyday person that's not in the healthcare uh, world every day to understand. There's first part is gold rush. Uh, so he goes into and explains... Uh, some studies of him traveling around the country and seeing how uh, providers and and uh, are really uh, going after members. Unfortunately, a lot of low income and and uh, middle class individuals uh, going after them, garnishing their wages, just what he calls predatory billing. And uh, it's pretty honestly pretty sad uh, to read through those chapters and see people that are you know making twelve hundred bucks biweekly paycheck. And then all of a sudden they get their uh, wages garnished in half uh, by the local hospital. He talks about a town in uh, New Mexico, Carlsbad, where there's about 25,000 people living in this town. And there's really only one hospital uh, to serve all of these people. He finds out that statistically speaking, about one in every five citizens in this town as being essentially sued by this hospital and having, you know, either getting put on payment plans for uh, overcharge procedures, or like I said, getting their uh, wages garnished, getting sued. 95% of the uh, civil lawsuits filed in that county are from the hospital, 95% to the point where even when he showed up to the, uh, when Dr. Uh, Makari showed up, to the courthouse to tell them, you know, why he was there to investigate the the uh, predatory billing of the local hospital. Like everyone in the room kind of just stopped what they were doing and had a story to tell them about whether themselves or someone that they knew. So it talks about um, pretty crazy story out in uh, as well in Vail, just to give you an example of, of price gouging, because a lot of these hospitals will tell you that they charge what they charge. So, you know, high up um, in dollar figures because that they have to subsidize the care for uh, the uninsured or the very sick and all that stuff. So 
that's the argument that they'll put up. Um, but we talk about a story out in Vail where one of his friends uh, got some altitude sickness and went to the hospital. He actually got a bit of advice from the nurse before uh, being admitted, saying, hey, just go home. You have altitude sickness. Just take some water um, and, you know, lay down and you're going to be OK. But this person in question didn't necessarily follow that advice. So decided to go see the doctor anyway. And the doctor basically told him the uh, same amount, same advice, same diagnosis. You have altitude sickness. Here's some pills, some IV, nothing super crazy. Um, but a couple of weeks later, this individual received a bill uh, for $11,000. And his argument, Dr. McCarty's argument in the book is that are there that many low income individuals and uh, people uninsured in Vail, Colorado, that you needed to charge $11,000 for a procedure that costs $800 where uh, he works at, at Johns Hopkins in Maryland. That is absolutely crazy. And his team goes in and creates a study that found that these emergency room bills are marked up significantly more than what the internal medicine department would normally charge. That just means for those putting it together that these hospitals are just taking advantage of people in dire situations and recommending, you know, more expensive procedures, for example, like a C-section um, for it to be just more convenient for the doctor to, to, you know, get home for the weekend as an example. And that might sound crazy. That is actually true and is put up in a study in the book um, where they dive into a a specific hospital where they had an outlier, the surgeon, and uh, I'll dive into that in a second, but it's just crazy. The fact that someone would recommend a a woman giving birth, right? That they don't need a C-section to put them through that and then pass on the bill to the insurance company. And what people don't realize is that ultimately it all gets pushed down. All these high claims, all these uh, dollars to be made up for um, in losses and unnecessary procedures, it gets passed down to consumers like myself and and all their uh, fellow citizens in the form of high insurance premiums, right? Um, no, there's no such thing as a free lunch is what I, I like to always say. So um that was a crazy story uh, called Gold Rush Part One. Uh, the second part of the book is called Improving Wisely. So uh, Dr. Uh, Macari talks about some different uh, ways of being a little bit more transparent and using individual benchmarks to identify outliers in surgery rooms to be uh, specific. And this is helping doctors be a little bit more aware of the things that they might not normally uh, be mind, you know, be on top of while they're uh, doing tens and, and hundreds of surgeries right throughout the year is that they might be contributing to wasteful spending. And by creating this culture of accountability, because in their study that they sent out, 80% of the doctors found that these uh, individual benchmarks of peer data was very important. And it made them aware of like, oh man, I didn't know that I was you know, stacking up X percentage, 20%, 30% more against my peers performing this one specific surgery when there's other outcomes, there's other avenues of care that they could have explored. Right. Um, So I just love numbers don't lie. Right. They tell a very powerful uh, tale and they help you measure um, where the money is going at the end of the day. So this need for uh, metrics and measurements uh, helps us make these drastic improvements in in healthcare. We should honestly apply them to every medical procedure to make sure that we avoid over-treatment. You know, sometimes uh, clinicians, they'll break down surgeries that take should take a day and they'll take three days and benchmarking can pick up on these things when you start to see outliers pop up. Um, And one big role uh, where this could be really uses in drug prescriptions, specifically opioids. If we could benchmark the surgeries that need opioids and how often patients are actually using these post-surgery, you could limit how much clinicians can prescribe and and see if it's even worth uh, passing on on all these medicines and costs, right? Because somebody's got to pay for it. Overtreatment is a huge, huge problem in America. And this book uses a lot of examples, but the point is extremely, extremely simple and direct and easy to understand. It's that you need to measure so that you can improve. And uh, part three of the book is essentially just how to um, 
what's going on in the healthcare industry to really fix it uh, and make it more transparent. And Dr. Macari talks about different organizations out there that have popped up in the last several years that um, are really interested in doing a change and being more price transparent with what um, they're presenting. And because uh, we can't think of another industry that you go into it and you have no idea what you're paying for until after you administer your care, right? Uh, it's like go to the mechanic and you need to get, you know, um, the tires rotated and you, you usually get a price beforehand, right? We've all been there. Well, with this, you go um, and you have no idea what you're paying for until you get a bill in the mail a couple of weeks later, thinking that your insurance covered it, right? Or you might get, oh, you know, I'll pay the $3,000 and then you get a bill for $20,000 because the anesthesiologist that came in and uh, put you under or another doctor came in and worked on you while you were out cold is technically out of network while the facility where you got your surgeries in network, you get a bill for that um, service of the out of network procedure, which is just crazy to me. Um, but the, you know, part three covers the healthcare blue book is a uh, program that uh, was started uh, by a gentleman whose son had a Achilles operation and he had a $5,000 deductible. The doctor was telling him to go to this specific facility because, uh, you know, insurance would pay most of it. He just had to pay his $5,000 out of pocket. And, you know, that's a lot of money to a lot of people. There's an overwhelming majority of Americans don't have just $5,000 lying around that they could spend on a uh, surgery, right? So the uh, hospital price of surgery at $37,000. And then when the gentleman called to get more transparency on network discounts and things of that nature, they jumped down the price to $15,000. So the member then essentially called the surgeon that was going to be performing the surgery on his son and asked him if he was doing surgeries anywhere else, right? Well, he was. A lot of these surgeons, they work with different hospitals and these hospitals charge different rates depending on who your employer is and, and what plan you're on and, and a, a plethora of other uh, variables. But he found that the surgeon was going to be performing the surgery uh, at a facility right down the road for a total of 1500 bucks for the same surgeon, same quality of care, same procedure, same machines. Obviously, you get your surgery done at the place it costs you 1500 bucks and not five thousand dollars right mm -hmm. so this man created a program called healthcare blue book that collects pricing data from self-funding employers right self-funding employers are essentially companies that are paying for their uh, health plan themselves rather than passing all that risk to one of the big insurance companies they're paying for their claims themselves as they come in to get a better understanding and better control over that their healthcare expenditure. If you haven't heard of self-funding before, I highly recommend it as a avenue. It's not for everybody, but it's definitely worth exploring um, because it just gives you complete transparency. It allows you to implement a lot of different tools that you might not normally be able to use before in, in another model. So uh, what Healthcare Blue Book does is collects all this pricing data from the employers uh, to establish a fair price on the amount uh, for those procedures. It even categorizes facilities in terms of price and uh, price and quality through colors, like green, yellow, red, on both price and quality. They even have uh, ways to incentivize employees like a gift card, um, the member might find out that they need to get an MRI done at a place and it costs $3,500 uh, to the plan. But if they are able to go through a facility at Healthcare Blue Book, let's say it has a green card or a green color in terms of quality and, and care, right? And, uh, and price, they're able to get a $50 gift card on a MRI that now costs 400 bucks. So it's a win-win for everybody. The employer saving money, the member saving money, and they get a gift card and they get the exact same quality of care um, than going to where the, uh, the hospital was initially recommending. Dr. Macari also covers in part three, the transparency of commissions versus consultant fees on the broker side of things, which I think is something that people don't realize exactly how this can contribute to unnecessary spending that's ultimately passed down. It's it's probably the one that's talked about the least is insurance kickbacks. You have uh, consultants out there that might be more interested in essentially 
getting commission based on a percentage of premium um, rather than taking just a straight up consultant fee for the whole group. Uh, think about it. If you're a broker and and I don't fault you know people because that's just how the industry was created and, and what it, it led to is that if you're making 4% on commission on a group, wouldn't you be a little bit incentivized to get them to renew with a plan that might be more expensive or more favorable for you as a, as a consultant, since you're getting a piece of the pie, if you get them something that's going to save them a lot of money or knock down your commission or change your payment structure, th- maybe you don't want to do that, right? Uh, as a, as a consultant for your own pocket. I mean, I, I, I get that. I, you know, we, I've personally been in those situations and, and they can be pretty hard decisions to make. And it's not fair that the system has built that out, but it is what it is. So um, Macari is very transparent about that. He's transparent about some even insurance companies giving kickbacks to consultants. So think of uh, a consultant in that situation where you have a, a group, one of your clients is with X, uh, you know, big insurance company, and you know that there's better options out there. And the big insurance company is telling you that, you know, telling you in your ear, if you keep this client with us, We'll send you or your agency a, a kickback for you know fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars. That's powerful, and that goes to show how powerful these insurance companies are. Um, that even if you don't do that right, and and there's a story on here about that, the broker basically telling these big insurance companies go kick the kick the curb. Um, that you'll essentially get blackballed uh, in the broker community in the. Uh, health employee benefits community. It's pretty sad. Um, it's just a lot of conflicts of interest are going back and forth from the broker to the insurance company to the group. And it's hard to decipher where the uh, ha- your heart is as a consultant of, of what you're doing. Because um, at the end of the day, those consultants have families to, to feed, right? Um, they have their own personal uh, interests as well that they need to juggle and sometimes it just might not be in line with what is best for the employer. So um, I really enjoyed this book. I would really recommend it to anyone, whether they're in healthcare or not, to get a better understanding of what's going on in our healthcare system. Um, because I think that there's room for improvement. I don't think that we need to blow it all up, my personal opinion. But I think that there's uh, definitely some models out there and programs that are being introduced into the marketplace that can uh, have the help the conversation move forward in a way where uh, people are being, you know, they're making money, they're living a good life, but we're also cutting out the wasteful spending and the administrative, you know, crap uh, that has engulfed our, our healthcare system. So we'll put the uh, link for the book in the uh, description below, put an Amazon link. I, again, highly recommend it. Um, And, you know, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, And until next time, This is Kevin with the Book Legion signing off.